intention, right? So it's like, oh, now we do it just like the college kids do it. So now we're going to try it. So if you're going to try back answering us, here's the thing about here's the thing about this skill. Once they know it, it's fairly easy because it generates a lot of speed and a lot of power. Getting them to know the technique is where the risk of injury really is, and mainly for one reason, one big thing, is if they don't have timing with the top and they step in too early and take their hands out during the back handspring. Okay, that's the biggest thing you're trying to avoid. So all these drills are gonna be based off getting their timing together and proper hand placement. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is the back handspring itself. So Jesse has a really good back handspring, but that's actually a detriment to a back handspring up at, at a certain point because you can't pull like a normal back handspring and snap down like you're gonna go into another back handspring. If you do, you're gonna hit their hands too much, it's gonna go too fast, they won't be able to pick it up. So the, so the goal is to teach Jesse to do a back handspring to here and then fall into a push-up position. And the reason you want them to go into a push-up position is because being nice and long, that's how she's gonna be when they start picking her up, all right? So you can do it this way. Watch, she's gonna do the back handspring, and then Morgan's gonna help her. Okay, help slow it down to the push-up, just like that, okay? And that's, that's how you're gonna, that's how you're gonna, the first thing you're gonna do with your, with your girls that are the tops is you're gonna get their back handspring into a proper way where it's used as a loading skill. Okay, so do that one more time. And the flatter that she can be in that push-up, the better. Like that, see how long she is? Okay, so that's what you're looking for. Now we're gonna start getting the timing for all of them together. So, go ahead and just get out, we'll just, we'll just do one. Just do a regular back handspring. Okay, so oh, stay, yeah, stay, yeah, stay away and get the time. Right, all right, so on this one, I, they're all they're all in place, but see how wide they are. I don't want them near her yet because I need them to get timing with her so they don't take her hands out. So go ahead and just do one. So now, right now, they're just getting their swing together. See how they're all blocking here? They're just getting timing, and so you just have to do that over and over till you're comfortable with how it looks, and you keep asking them, "Are you guys comfortable about reaching in? Do you feel like you have good timing?" Okay, but don't just do this drill once and think, "Okay, they're ready to go," mm -hmm. because especially if they're just learning it, they're not ready to go yet, okay? Does it help if the bases swing their arms with the flyer? Yeah, so there's, uh, people do it all different ways, okay? But you'll see most of them in some version are swinging here. Uh, I'm gonna show you a video in a second of one. And uh, the, one of the main bases, she swings and then she pulls in just like into these weird little daggers, but hey, whatever works for them. So the next part of this drill is now we're comfortable with the timing, so now we're gonna actually come in and make contact but we're not gonna do anything else. They're not even gonna pick her up, okay? Timing and then contact. Now is where I'm gonna fix the grip or make sure they're in a proper place. So see where they're, they're kind of on the rib cage. Their back hand is up around the hip there, the middle of the hip right here. And the key thing is your back spot is on those thighs and she's gonna block the legs the whole time. As it starts to go up, if she lets the, if I see the feet start dropping, then it's not gonna go up because the feet are either gonna get behind the back spot or they're gonna swing through really low. So it's key for the back spot to block and make it stay there, then they take the shoulders up over top. Everybody see that? Get, get a visual of it? I'm gonna show it on video in a second where we can slow it down. The next part of this, sorry. The next part of it, so now we've got the grip, we know where the hand placement is. Now we're gonna start getting some timing coming off the ground. Can you read grab? No. You don't? Okay. You want to uh, We'll show one of each. So there's two ways the top can do this. Jesse does it kind of old school, which is how I usually teach it. Yeah. So they make contact, they just pick her up, and Jesse just basically blocks off the ground, and then her hands are here to pull up to whatever they're going to. Go ahead and stamp them. Okay. You can also, though, do it, a lot of people do it now, where the girl, the top girl re-grabs <coughs> real quick onto the wrist or the forearm. Can you do that one? Yeah. The, the key difference in this is that if you do it this way, she's got to go a little bit faster than normal off the ground so that she can get her hands onto the forearms. And by putting her hands here, she can now push off again. Okay? So there's pros and cons to both. The, uh, the first way she did it, I like that way because I'm, I'm a minimal movement person. As little movement as possible, lines, that kind of stuff. So she blocks off here and there's no more movement. The positive for going here is you're allowed to, re now you're in a position to push again to help get your shoulders up faster. And honestly, don't, I think most people do it that way now, don't they? Yes, it's one of those things if you're push, if the top girls push off from the bases, it's because the bases are not being quick. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so you can do it either way. All right. Mm. 